before starting the job we have to close the starting air valve and control air supply for the puncture valve we have to confirm the valve number by seeing the drawing in the maneuvering platform so once uh, the control air is supplied uh, once the control air is stopped then you have to isolate the fuel supply for the particular fuel pump so all you need to do is uh, you have to remove the handle of the fuel inlet so that uh, it will avoid accidental operation of the fuel valve so it is always recommended to remove the valve handle for the particular fuel pump so that uh, as i said earlier it will avoid accidental operation of the fuel valve fuel oil inlet uh, valve so i had removed it i had uh, secured it now the next thing is i need to drain the fuel oil so for that uh, we have we can see the drain valve behind the fuel pump it is always kept tight because uh, sometimes due to vibration the valve tends to open so in order to avoid that we used to tighten it with a, with a wire so just open the wire and uh, open the drain valve very slowly because sometimes if the main valve is not holding the oil can splash out so you have to open it very slowly and ensure the oil is completely drained then only you start opening the fuel pump top cover so we are waiting for the fuel oil from the particular fuel pump to get drained completely you can see the oil is coming out through the drain pipe so the oil is completely drained so the next step what we need to do is you have to open the safety air supply for the particular unit this is the safety air line for the particular uh, fuel pump so we have to remove the connection for this uh, pipe i am removing it so now we are removing the safety air line for the particular uh, unit so okay we are removed it so once uh, the air connection is removed then the next thing is you can start removing the puncture valve bolts so these bolts are uh, very uh, you can see it's very hard to open so always use a pipe to open it so it will be easier to open with the help of a pipe and a wrench so now we have to open all the six bolts to remove it we have total six bolts for this uh, type of uh, puncture valve you can see how hard it is to remove the how, to, how hard is to open the puncture valve uh, bolts so okay so once uh, we had loosened that particular bolt these bolts are a uh, little bit longer bolts so that uh, once you loosen it you can use uh, wrench pneumatic wrench to open it that's what i'm doing now so once you use the pneumatic wrench uh, you can make the job more easier so for the initially you have to use uh, manual so that uh, you can give your full force to open that particular bolt you can see i'm removing the bolts uh, very easily with the help of uh, pneumatic wrench okay so i had removed all the six uh, bolts for the particular uh, puncture valve so the thing is uh, once we removed all the six bolts you cannot uh, open it uh, by hand so what we need to do is uh, you have to do a jacking operation for removing the particular puncture valve 
so now i am loosening the puncture valve very slowly because sometime uh, oil can splash out if we open it very rapidly so that is the reason i am uh, opening it very slowly so this is the jack bolt which i am going to use for jacking the puncture valve we can use any kind of uh, bolts uh, because it's a old ship most of the special tools are already damaged so all we do is we fabricate our own tool and usually the jacking tool is nothing but a small uh, bolt that's all you have to keep uh, two bolts on both the side of the jacking slot and you have to tighten it so that the puncture valve will come up you can see i'm tightening the bolts so while tightening only you can see the puncture valve is slowly coming up you can see yeah you can see the puncture valve is uh, coming up so this is what i said that uh, uh, removing the puncture valve by doing jacking operation so when i tight both the bolts the puncture valve tends to come up okay so i had removed uh, the remaining four bolts of that particular puncture valve you can see the puncture valve is almost uh, up all i need to do is i have to give a little push and uh, remove the puncture valve so i left it more uh, two bolts those two bolts also i will remove it now so once i remove it and it will be easy for me to lift the puncture valve okay that's all so some more jacking to be done to remove it as i said uh, earlier the puncture valve is uh, very hard to dismantle means uh, very hard to remove from place so you have to be a little bit patience you should not uh, get uh, you know you should not get tensed when it is not coming up so patience is really very needed for uh, doing this kind of job and you have to use your uh, knowledge to remove this just read the manual they will give you proper way how to remove it and you just follow the manual okay so you can find the puncture valve is already out so that's all the puncture valve is removed so this is how we have to remove the puncture valve so what you can see is the, the leakage is because of the o-ring on the puncture valve and uh, we have to clean this area nicely clean it and then uh, we can fix the new overall uh, puncture valve clean the puncture valve housing area properly remove all dirt all impurities everything so that uh, when you install a new overall puncture or new or overall puncture all it should go by itself easily no more leakages okay so next thing is uh, as i always say always uh, do buffing for the bolts before using it and that is what i am doing buff all the bolts properly and be safe while doing the buffing and do the buffing for the area of uh, puncture wall in that particular uh, unit use uh, buffing machine for doing this kind of job it will be more uh, effective use some diesel oil to remove all old oils so that uh, you can clean that area properly you can use uh, long nose buffing machine for doing the buffing inside the fuel pump top cover so that uh, the access will be more easier you can see here yeah. this is how you can do the buffing inside by using the pneumatic uh, machine once the buffing is done then next thing is uh, 
use some diesel oil to remove all the impurities you can see uh, we are using the diesel oil so that all small particles all impurities will be come out use a cloth and uh, wipe down the diesel oil the diesel oil is uh, very good uh, for removing all this kind of uh, cleaning jobs use diesel oil and then uh, blow some air on all the paths so that uh, the entire section is cleaned once cleaning is done the next thing is uh, we are ready to fit back the overall the puncture valve so use the jacking bolts or uh, any bolts to lift it because uh, for fixing the puncture valve you have to hold it properly and for holding this bolts will be enough to hold the puncture valve so main thing what you need to notice is you have to ensure the o-ring is renewed and o-ring groove is properly cleaned so once the o-ring is applied uh, give you a coat of anti seizure copper slip or moly coat whichever and uh, give you a coat around the body so once the uh, coat is done then we are ready to fix the puncture valve in place so okay so the main thing that we need to notice is you have to ensure the o-ring is renewed and o-ring is in place during the entire job so we are going to fix it just match the bolt holes insert it that's all we are done next is we have to fix the bolt and tighten it for the bolt again uh, put anti seizure like uh, moly coat or uh, copper slip whatever and uh, fix the bolts and uh, tighten the bolts as per the tightening procedure given in the manual usually you have to tighten it diagonally that's all it's a thumb rule okay so once the tightening is done then you have to tighten the bolts by torque for this uh, particular engine for this particular model we have to give a 300 uh, newton tightening so after hand tightening is done then you go for uh, torque tightening as i said earlier and make sure your torque wrench is properly calibrated and you are uh, setting the value properly according to the makers recommended value so for this as i said uh, 300 uh, nm but it again depends on the engine size and engine model and maker maker gives you what torque you have to give so you can see yeah you can see the torque range is around uh, 300 nm so again the same procedure tighten the bolts diagonally yeah okay we are going to do the final tightening for all the puncture valve bolts so once the tightening is done then uh, the next thing is we have to fix the control air uh, pipe so for the control air pipe uh, you have to f do the fitting for the fitting you have to just uh, give a teflon uh, tape so that uh, there won't be any leakage after fixing so we are doing the fitting of the pipe fitting on top of the puncture valve and fix the pipe tighten it properly okay so after that pipe fixture then uh, very little open the fuel oil and uh, then open the drain valve 
the this is to do the purging of the fuel pump just open a little and ensure the air is being bleeded out from the fuel pump and once the fuel oil starts coming from the drain line then you can uh, close the then you can close the drain pipe yeah i closed it very little i open i just want to show you the okay so i open the fuel oil completely the next thing is i need to put back the control air system in place so this is the control air system so back to normal so this is how we have to do the renewal and refit of